We're starting with the story of Joseph. You don't need to open your Bibles. You're going to just listen, okay? This is from Genesis chapter 37, verse 23 through 28. So I bet you remember this story really well. Joseph was the youngest child, but he was his father's favorite. His brothers were jealous because Joseph kept having all these dreams that his, young, his older brothers were going to worship him. And they didn't like that. How many of you have siblings? Uh, older or younger? Dante, you have a sibling. And when you have a sibling, do you want, hands down, do you want them to say, hey, you're going to worship me one day? No. 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 Joseph's brothers were no exception. They're like, uh-uh, no, we're not. Like, you're the little brother, learn your place, friend. But, so he had all these dreams that they were going to worship him. They did not like this. His father was kind of like, calm down, friend. But Joseph didn't. So this is the story, remember, where Joseph's dad gave him the really fancy coat? Yeah. And when he got the coat, his brothers, like, he had to go out and check on his brothers, and they threw him down a well. They were going to kill him, but one brother said, no, let's not. So they took the coat, and they ripped it, and they put the sheep's blood on it so his dad would think he was dead, and they sold him into slavery. Well, he ends up in Egypt, yeah. which is where a lot of the Old Testament takes place. Mm -hmm. So in Egypt, he ends up working for the Pharaoh, mm -hmm. and he warns the Pharaoh about a famine that's coming. Famine is when there's no crops, no food, mm -hmm. and because of Joseph, the Pharaoh knew in advance, and he was able to set aside food. So when the famine came, Egypt still had food. Joseph's brothers came to find him and asked because they had to come to Egypt to get food. And Joseph's brothers didn't recognize him at first, which makes a lot of sense because he was much older. He was much older. He was speaking a different language. They thought he had been a slave, so they weren't even looking for him. I like to compare this to when you see your teacher at a grocery store when you were little, mm -hmm. and you yeah. just don't recognize them, and it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Because I know, like, sometimes we'd go out and we'd see people, and you're like, wait, what are you doing here? Because you're not expecting to see your teacher at, like, Publix. Mm -hmm. So, same type of thing, much more dramatic. Mm -hmm. Joseph eventually ends up forgiving his brothers. But now the Israelites are living in the land of Egypt. Are you with me? That's how we get from rowing to Egypt. Kelly. Did you read that before Moses and then right after that? Yeah, we're getting to Moses. He's coming today too. The next slide, so that's Joseph. Joseph helps. Sorry. Joseph is sold into slavery by his brothers. That's that slide. The picture for this one is usually the coat. Yes? So there's this, um, a movie on Netflix about yep. Joseph, and I watched it. I watched it at the middle of the month. Oh, cool. And uh -huh. um, it shows how like his, his brothers mm -hmm. escaped him and he killed him. Yep. cool thing I think about this is that Joseph forgave his brothers which for me that's a lot because he had a lot of power and he could have been like go to jail you tried to kill me you're done but he didn't because the other Vanessa really important thing about Joseph is that he didn't say look how great I am when the Pharaoh had approached him and said hey I hear you can tell people what their dreams mean he said I can but only because God lets me not because of what I do, but because of what God does. 
So he really kept the focus on God. Nobody's pulling out their iPads yet. The next slide is the story, and I know you guys know this because you spent a lot of time in fourth grade on Moses. And you remember he was in the basket, in the river, the plagues that came to Israel. Are you remembering this? Yeah. So this is where we change books of the Bible, though. The story of Moses is in the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 1 through 10, and chapter 14, verses 1 through 31. So Moses listens to God, and leads out of Egypt. Now, there's some frustrating moments in this story. This is the Ten Commandments part. There are a lot of crazy parts in this story. It's really cool. I'm sure you've seen the movie. Yes. Also, in the Moses movie, the Moses Netflix. Yeah. Perfect. It's a good one where God's there with Moses the whole time. And I have to say, Moses, kind of a brave guy, because if I walked up and I saw a bush that was on fire but not really burning, and then I heard a voice say, hey, I need you to go to the king and tell him to let his slaves go, I'd be like, nope, you got the wrong guy. And Moses tried. He was like, God, I'm not good enough to speak to a king. Nobody's going to listen to me. God said, I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to help you. The other really cool thing is that God sent Moses' brother Aaron with him. He said, you're nervous. I'm going to send somebody to help you. Now, the king was really stubborn. They went through it all, okay? So they turned the water to blood. But the king's magicians can do that, too. So nobody's very impressed. They go through water to blood. Animals die. There's gnats. There are flies. There are frogs. There's a hailstorm. And the hailstorm is really bad. It's the worst thing the king has ever seen. And so he says, okay, you know what? Go. Go, Moses. Just go. Well, then when the storm stops, the Pharaoh's like, you know what? It's really not that bad. Y'all should stay. You're staying. Yep. Then the, finally, the firstborn of every person, every Egyptian died, including their animals. But what's interesting is you see that God destroys the crops the animals, all of it. And Pharaoh still won't let go. At one point he says, okay, the men can go, but women and children stay here. Moses said, nope. And then the Pharaoh says, you know what, okay, fine. Men, women, and children, you can all go, but your animals stay here. And Moses says, no. Because remember, during this time in history, they were offering animals as sacrifice to God. And remember Cain and Abel? When Cain didn't give his best offering, do you think that they were excited to potentially give their best to the Pharaoh and not to God? Uh-uh. Nope. So then, eventually, Moses parts the Red Sea. The Pharaoh says, just go. Moses parts the Red Sea. They're all able to leave. He goes. They wander in the desert for 40 years. It's a long time. They go and they wander. God's leading the way the whole time, but they don't know where they're going. They get to Mount Sinai. Moses climbs to the top. He comes down with the Ten Commandments. He's like, okay, guys, before he leaves, just behave. Worship God. Don't get in trouble. They go to the top of the mountain. They turn around. They get the commandments from God. Start walking back down. The people are having giant parties and worshiping false gods. Moses is like, are you kidding me? I just left. What do you do? He gets mad. He smashes the stone tablets down. He's angry because, I mean, for real. All the stuff he had done for these people, all the stuff God had done for them, in a heartbeat, the people turned her against him and against God. So Moses gets the crowd back under his control, talks to God, gets God to forgive the Israelites, because God's not pleased with them either. He's like, do you not remember? It was just, we just did this. We just freed you. So God gives a new set of the Ten Commandments, and the Israelites move on. So the pictures are completely up to you. There should be a code for the story of Joseph. Pharaoh 
This right here could be a crown, whatever it needs to be for you. Ten Commandments for Moses, yes. Didn't like they start worship, worshiping on a golden cow? Yep, they worship the golden calf. All right, Dante Cut, you have 